Dear listeners, good morning and welcome to Comme d'Archi, the podcast that opens the doors to the fascinating world of architecture. For newcomers, let me introduce myself. I'm the spokesperson of Anne-Charlotte Despont, PhD in History of Architecture, published author, head of a communication and development agency based in Paris, France, dedicated to architecture. Let's meet every week to discuss culture and architecture with specialists and learn how to look at projects through a context and diversity lens. Thank you for being with me today, and now it's time for talent. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Dear listeners, good morning. This is Esther, reading for Aunt Charlotte, and it is so good to be back on Comme d'Archi. In this Comme d'Archi hashtag 24, we will talk about the 3M Tower of Sergi Pontoise and the urgency of memory. Can we imagine the Eiffel Tower destroyed? No, of course not. Paris, without its Eiffel Tower, will no longer be Paris. But remember, there was a time when it had its detractors. At the end of this year, 2020, catastrophic on many points, Covid attacks, know that on top of it all, Sergi Pontoise just had its emblematic Canterbury Tower knocked down. Why emblematic? Because the 3M Tower has welcomed a manner of assets from the new city. Because the constructive and technological feat was unprecedented here and particularly skillful. Because the building made a major contribution to the launch of the famous new town of Sergi. Because this work is part of the skyline of this Canterbury city. It glorified its Canterbury spirit, breaking the monotony of more ordinary architecture made of slabs and concrete. The 3M Tower in Sergi Pontoise was plastic, powerful, unique throughout the world. Finally, because it took its place in a vast green lung in the heart of the city. Instead, more than 1,000 concrete housing units. In 2003, I published an article with the evocative title The 3M France Project in Sergi Pontoise From Rust Heap to Heritage Building. Because 17 years ago, and after 25 years of use, all dangers seemed to have been removed, and awareness and recognition had finally taken hold. Still, in 2003, I wrote in the magazine L'Acier pour Construire. This architectural work with innovative technology, whose constructive rationality yellows the plasticity of the walls, seems to resist an area marked by obsolescence. Its implementation and the optimized use of materials have led to significant savings from the competition phase to the present day. This architectural expression with its strongly expressed materiality does not suffer today from any mismatch between its form and its use. On the contrary, to the great satisfaction of the project owner, who is still a user and owner, it responds to the perpetually changing use induced by contemporary economic laws. However, the danger was in it there. A first sign had appeared in the aftermath of the 2001 attacks. The tower, then recently magnified by a lighting system, suddenly fell into darkness. We must not give the terrorists bad ideas. Time passes. I defended my doctoral thesis on the history of architecture in 2004. Metal construction Paul Dupont architect. Reveling this hitherto little-known page in the history of contemporary architecture. I received congratulations from the jury and from some of the major actors who have known history. Then, one day in 2013 or 2014, my memories are hard to remember, a call from one of the directors of 3M. You will have to resign yourself. The 3M Tower will be demolished. The sky fell on my head. As a former employee of Sergi Pontoise, because I was employed in the Sergi Pontoise architecture agency of Paul Dupont, the architect who designed the tower and also my uncle, I asked around. It was reported to me by word of mouth that the city authorities no longer wanted this tower. On the other hand, I am told that Dominique Clefebvre, former mayor of Sergi Pontoise and director of the Communauté d'Agglomération, has done everything possible to save the tower. I'm chatting live with Dominique Lefebvre at a trade show, 
and I try to convince him. He seems very uncomfortable to me. Where does the truth lie? In the end, it doesn't matter, since the axe has fallen. The fault lies with the economic model I keep harping on. Sergi is not Paris. That's true. That doesn't stop my ears from ringing. Which way should we take things? Adversity is in full swing. Since then, after vain attempts to raise awareness, contacts in all directions, alerts with the media in vain, the tower is demolished. The operator, aware of the sloth of heritage, entrusted me with a work of memory. A lesser evil. But what was this tower? A high-rise building, yes, but the constraint was adaptable by condemning the necessary level. A building with local asbestos, and not the structure. We have already seen much worse. On this point, the local press seems to have been manipulated, which looks like a very bad rule. A building lacking light? That was an exaggeration. An obsolete building? In its last moments of activity, it remained very relative, and many examples of recurrence exists. Anyway, what's the point? It is too late. So, what can we learn from this building? The 3M Tower was the French headquarters of the American firm of the same name from 1976 to 2018, built at its request. A tower with a steel structure made of self-skidding steel, a steel very rarely used structurally in the construction of buildings, but especially in the United States for the building of bridges. Rare similar buildings with court and steel structure are clearly identified, including the headquarters of the John Deere firm in Moline, USA, designed by the great name of architectural modernity, Hiro Saarinen. In Sergi, it is no longer a simple structure, but a complex structure with peripheral stability, with fixed fasteners like rivets, and sliding fasteners so that the building can expand. Faced with the need to build a tower, inspired by American models, Paul de Pont wanted to push this approach by designing a building with peripheral stability. A fervent user of metal, he wanted to push further, for its intrinsic qualities, the use of self-skidding steel known as Corten, already used in a previous project, that of the Grand Mar. Jean Roret, the structural engineer of the company CFEM and very involved in the project, said in 1994, The architect Paul de Pont, who likes metal, had an idea that was not entirely feasible at the beginning. We thought about this problem and finally submitted an offer that had the double advantage of being cheaper than the others and being feasible in a shorter time frame. The stability is peripheral and obtained by the use of virandal ladder beams, which are made of posts and spandrels. As the spandrel of the structure is an external spandrel, there is no curtain wall. The implementation of this set was complicated because of its cross shape. Paul de Pont, in our interview of October 1999, told me, La Compagnie Française d'Entreprise Métallique, CFEM, helped me enormously. It wasn't me who decided that we will make a building that would float on a neoprene joint. It's a liner that floats and they understood that. They figured that in order for it to float, you have to put it on a piece of land that it can float on. The relationship that happened at that time allowed the impossible to happen. They will never have made a building like that if it hadn't started from me. I was obsessed with the skyscrapers that were built in the United States, in which the bracing is not taken in the center, but on the periphery. Since this greatly increased inertia for this to be possible, the overall structure had to be invented. This is where CFEM understood. They had a formidable engineer, Jean Roret. In France, we weren't ready, so they went to buy the calculation program in Boston. They knew it existed. For $50, they got the program, they programmed it, they gave a competitive price. In the 2000s, the project management flattened the building's ability to adapt to the permanent changes in internal distribution since 1976, more than 25 years of use. 
Since core ten steel must remain in the open air, the facade requires no special maintenance. The savings in maintenance costs allows for optimal maintenance. In 2019, at the time of the demolition, it is planned to dismantle the structure and reuse the materials. An ecological approach unconsciously anticipated by Paul Dupont? To top it all off? For the brutal change in land policy on the part of 3M in the years 2010 does indeed condemn the building. In order to keep 3M in Sergi, the public authorities are embarking on a new real estate strategy, making the most of this immense property in the heart of the city where the tower is located. Another 3M headquarters designed by Jacques Ferrier is being built next door. Time, money and a lack of knowledge will have taken their toll on the skillful architecture. Well, bye-bye everybody. See you next week with the Resilient Project. Take care of yourself. Bye. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to tune in to our previous content on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you like it, Make sure to promote the podcast by giving it five stars on Apple Podcast and adding a comment or on any of your favorite podcast platforms. And don't forget to subscribe and listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon. And until then, take care of yourself.